Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by the first and only IFL welterweight champion, Jay Haran. Jay, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Jay, you recently picked up a win at Legacy FC 12 against Romario De Silva. The fight ended with a controversial stoppage, but that's not your fault. You know, your job is to go in there and fight, and the referee's job is to go in there and oversee the action. But how did you feel about your performance in the fight? This is the second time it's happened where you've applied a submission and the guy was still in there, but the referee stopped it. The first time happened, it was against Anthony Lapsley. What was the tighter submission, this one or the Lapsley one? Definitely this one. I had him, you know, the boss is one of my uh, favorite chokes. I'm really good at it. You know, nine times out of ten, if I have a guy in that position, I'll, you know, I'm pretty much going to face him. So definitely this one, and I had a good grip on it, and it was really tight. So, I mean, I, I really believe he went out and then he, he might have came back right as the ref was pulling me off. Mm-hmm. You know, the right. he's a fight, he's going to say, hey, I was good. But right. I really feel he went out for a second. Right. He went limp, you know, he wasn't moving, he wasn't fighting it. And I was squeezing. He wasn't your original opponent. You were supposed to fight Mike Bronzales. He pulled out with a week to go before the fight. How much did you know about Romero de Silva before you got in there and fought him? Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it sucks, but that's part of the game. People get injured, especially that close to us. Like, so many emotions go through you. Like, you know, I just did an eight week camp. You know, that's your money. We just saw a lot of you. We don't get paid unless we fight. So it's kind of like, you know, a lot of emotions run through you. You know, I'm not going to say it. I, you know, it's good for me, but I guess I've been through that situation before. So I kind of, you know, take a step back, clear my head, and just let. Not a lot of people know who he is. You know, I don't. I don't think a lot of fans before this fight knew who he was. Were you relieved to get past him? Because you know, if he beats you, then you know people. Hey, he beat Jay Haran. You know, he starts to get you know a little bit of recognition. Were you relieved to get past him? Um, I mean, I, mean, I wouldn't say relieved. Like, I mean, I think every fight, you know, you go on. You know, every fight is just important. Um, you know, it's just one of those circumstances that, that uh, you know, it's kind of annoying, but that's part of the game. And, um, I mean, it may, you know, it makes me more confident in myself, you know, because, you know, fighting a guy like that on short notice, he, he is acting like you said. He don't have, you know, nothing to stress. He's coming from Brazil. He, he's trying to make his mark. He was dead, ready in shape, ready to go. He was ready. You know, if you hear his interviews, he's saying there's no way I could beat him, so he's totally confident. But again, I'm ready, man. I feel like I'm one of the best fighters in the world. And, um, you know, what I got to do, I just got to keep showing it. And that's my plan. You know, I got a new outlook on, um, you know, my career, and I'm just trying to have fun with it as long as it lasts. Um, and not put too much pressure and stress on it because I believe I've been through all that already. And, you know, keep moving forward. That's all I got to do is keep going forward. And that's it. To answer your question, yeah, it's, uh, you know, if you let that play in your mind, uh, you know, the, the guy, you know, he really 
were there any doubts about taking the fight? Because I saw an interview that you did where, where you talked about how you know you, you wanted to fight guys who were known. You wanted to fight you know good guys. You didn't really want to fight these young guns or guys who were unknown who were just you know really tough guys and maybe they haven't developed or they you know haven't emerged yet. Uh, was there any doubt about taking the fight or was it just hey I've done all the work just give me somebody to fight? Yeah, I mean, it, but it's so close to the fight. It's like if I don't fight, it's I don't get paid. Right. You know, so I mean, you know, I'm, uh, I wasn't in a position to, you know, to really say, <laughs> to really <laughs> right. say, uh, you know, no, because I trained my ass up to eight weeks. You know, you got to, you know, you get people to pay after we fight. You know, that's how it works. You know, we fight, we pay our trainers. You know, uh, whatever else you got to pay. That's how we live. Most our food, we don't go on. Mortgages, whatever, you know, we're fighters, so. Right. Um, um, and of course, I don't just do this for the money, but, you know, that plays a big part in it because that's how we live. Well, um, you know, once I, I told you, I, I, I was a little stressed at first, and I've been through this situation before. You know, I just took a step back, breathe, and kind of let it, you know, fall into place, and I feel like, you know, okay, it is what it is, let's go. So, you know, main um, priority, you know, and the main focus, trying to be the main focus is getting fights that mean something for me, guys with names, you know, guys, fights that are going to bring me up the ladder, you know, that's the fights I want, because I feel I can compete with anybody, you know, in the world, so, yeah, that's the goal, unfortunately, the fight business is crazy and it doesn't work out like that sometimes. Right. Did it make the situation... So, you know, Oh, go, go ahead. No, I said, um, you know, I'm just rolling with the punches of, of my career and, and of life. You know, life throws obstacles at you, and, you know, it's your job to maneuver to jump over them, and, you know, keep moving forward. That's what I'm doing. Did it make the situation a little bit better that the main event it fell through and then you were promoted to the main event? I know it was you know a, a weird situation because you had a you know a new opponent on one week's notice, but did it make it a little bit better that you were the main event? Well, I didn't even, I really didn't put me into any of it. Um, really until I got back from the fight, until I watched it on TV, and then I seen how much they promoted me, and you know, yeah, it was kind of. It was in my favor that I was on the main event. You know, it worked. Everything worked out well. Not to going back to you know the mental frame to have. You know, kind of let everything fall into place. Do what's in your control. And you know, that's my fighting, and that's what I try to focus on. You know, and you know, if they're working out for me, you know, it's great. They did a great job promoting me. Um, um, you know, uh, the announcers are great. Uh, Mike Chavello, he's one of the best in the world. I like how he announces. He's very intelligent. Um, they, he knows what's going on out there. Of course, Alistair was announcer too. He's, you know, great striker. He knows the game. And, um, you know, it, it was, uh, I couldn't say enough, the guys that legacy, they, they, they're real stand-up guys. Whatever they say, they do. And, um, um, but a good experience. After the fight, a lot of people were talking about a possible rematch. Anything there? Did anybody talk to you about that? I mean, you know what? Uh, like I said, my focus is trying to get name fighters, trying to make my career go up. I took that fight uh, because, you know, like I said again, it was five days out and I wanted to fight. I needed to fight. I was in shape. You know, I would have fought anybody. But, uh, yeah, that's not my first choice. You know, if we were, you know, say UFC and, you know, they put that fight together, then yes. I mean, but, you know, right now I'm not looking for that fight. I mean, I beat this guy there where he could be, he could bitch him on all he wants. That's on him. But, you know, he knows real deep down that, you know, he was going out if he wasn't out for a second. And that's the bottom line. First round, I, I played it. I, you know what I mean? I was in on it. He's a striker. I outstruck him. You know what I mean? I stood right, right in front of him. And I, I canned down one the first round of striking. And then I mixed it up on him and showed him what else I got. So, he, he's not on my level. And, you know what I mean? He's just trying to, you know, he's smart, he's trying to get a uh, piggyback off my name and trying to get another fight. You know, he got a little uh, exposure from it. You know, he's from Brazil. So, I mean, you know, he's doing what he does as a fighter. But for me, I'm trying to do what's best for me. You had this fight for Legacy. You fought for basically every MMA promotion out there, whether it be the UFC, IFL, yeah, Affliction, Strike Force. Yeah, I fought for 
<laughs> yeah, just basically every organization. I mean, just looking at it, you know, from somebody who you know maybe doesn't know you, maybe has never seen you fight before. When they see stuff like that, oh, this guy's a journeyman. But for me, I don't, I don't, I don't see you as a journeyman because the thing that happened with Strike Force, they didn't really want to promote you. They kept saying, hey, you know, we're going to give you a title shot. It, it never came up. Affliction, the IFL, they both went under. I mean, it's not your fault. You know, that stuff's out of your control. And any organization you've been in you've either fought for the title or been champion so do you view yourself as a journeyman absolutely not a journeyman right. is the whole boxing term of guys they bring in and get beat up that's a journeyman right my record speaks for itself I'm 23 and 5 there's no journeyman about that record yes right. like you said I fought for organizations and you know it's kind of been like a little bit of bad luck maybe you know I right. go fight for organization I win a title Next thing I know, they're going bankrupt. They're going under. I go to another organization. I have to knock out of the night with all these studs in the car. Fedor, uh, Olaski, uh, Rockwell was on there. Vito Belfort, a bunch of knockouts. And my knockout stood out the best. Right. What happens? They go under. I would have been fighting for a title for them. That's not my, you know, like, it's not in my control. Right. So, again, what I do, get back in the gym, hit that bag. You know, see what's next out there for me and keep moving forward, man. I mean, it, it, if I was just in this for the wrong reasons in this game, I would have been done a long time ago, bro, trust me, because I've been through the ups and downs of this sport. Are there any MMA organizations out there that you would have liked to have fought for but just never got a chance to? Overseas, but, I mean, you know, any main promotion in the States I've fought for. You know, and I mean, it's just getting to the point where... Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, I, in my career, I don't really think it's a bad thing because, like I said, I think I still think I'm getting better as a fighter. I'm getting more mature as a fighter. Um, you can see in my fights, you know, you know how my level's getting better. And, um, you know, the downtime I do have, I always take advantage of it. I get my skills up. You know, I'm a gym rat. First and foremost, I stay in the gym. Good times and bad times, I'm in the gym. So, again, I'm, I think, you know, that's what you class. This week, are you resting your body, you know, relaxing, or are you already back in the gym? This deal you have with Legacy, it's a three fight, well, two fights left, correct? Uh, I think it's a three, but these guys are good, man. You know, they definitely honor the contract, the stuff we wanted in it. So, I mean, you know, I'm just not exclusive, and uh, they're all around good guys, man. You know, it's like, at this point in my career, I need to, you know, know what I'm signing, the contract, and, hey, and, um, you know, just be, uh, just be uh, aware of everything going on, because, you know, I'm signed some bad deals before and I've been locked into some bad deals and you know so at the end of the day man I'm still you know I still see light at the end of the tunnel and I'm, and I'm going for it man when my career's over I'm not going to be sitting there saying oh, I should have did this I should have did that you know nah I, I, I'm going after it Jay is your ultimate goal for the remainder of the year to keep winning and, and make the jump to the UFC is that is that basically what you're what you're looking at
Jay, I was watching the fight, and when they showed the tail of the tape, they showed that you're 35, and I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. You don't look 35. You look the same when you, you know, when you're fighting George St. Pierre back in the UFC many years ago. Yeah, yeah. Age is just a number, baby. I mean, you know, 35 going on 25. Uh, it's just not a man. I mean, it's age is what you think you are. Right. You know, uh, blessed to be around Randy Couture. You be yeah, playing, right. That's you know, what. Yeah. Really, that's what. Like, that's what I was. That's what I was gonna say. I was. I was gonna say. I, I'm convinced that Randy Couture has discovered the fountain of youth. Did he give you a taste of it or something? Uh, no, but uh, <laughs> you know, just Randy Couture is he's an exceptional man. You know, not everybody could do that. And I'm not even saying I could fight till that age. Not even saying I would want to fight till that age. He's an exceptional man. But what he did is take care of himself. Yeah. You know, stay in the gym, healthy. You know, I mean, live a clean as life as possible with eating. You know, of course, you know, everybody's human, but, you know, you, you, did, all, you did all the groundwork that led to that. Also, which is big, is, you know, the competition isn't what it was then to now, you know, so right. that plays a big factor in it. But, you know, this guy is a, he's, uh, it's a, le- he's a legend for that, you know, even though he's still a legend, but still, like, you know, I'm going to do it as long as I can, bro. You know, I, I say, I go by feel. A lot of stuff in my life and my, you know, my career and everything, I go by how I feel, my gut instinct, you know, and um, when I wake up in the morning and I want to do this, I want to train, I want to fight, I want to step in this, still, I'm going to do it because I know I'm going to do it 100%. The day I get up and I'm not really into it and I'm doing it, maybe, you know, I don't know, I'm, I mean, that's when I'm going to pull myself back and be like, yo, listen, you know, it's time for something else. I've had a nice long run, I'm, you know, but for right now, I still got that fire burning, man. Jay, from what I understand, you were doing some work with some NFL players. You were training them in some MMA. Was that put you know on the back burner because you had a fight coming up, or are you still going to be doing some of that? Uh, yeah, I always do that, but it's more seasonal when they're like in pre-camp or something like that. But um, okay. Jay, thank you for being so generous with your time. Real quick, before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you would like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Jay, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it.